Hello, what's up YouTube photographer Ronix Sweet and Atria. In this tutorial, we're going to be learning about and understanding how to retouch images using frequency separation. And we're going to be retouching this image from the very start to the very end so that you can understand the concept of skin retouching and how frequency separation comes about. And if at all this is what you have always wanted to watch and learn, make sure that you hit the like button so that YouTube can push and recommend this video to many people out there. So you can see a quick before and after for the retouching of this very image and you can start with still retain the skin textures in this very image so i'm just going to come and i'm going to delete the retouch folder just like that then what you're going to first of all do is first of all cleaning up the image or removing the blemishes so in order to remove these blemishes i'm just going to use both the spot healing brush tool and the patch tool to clean up and remove the blemishes in this very image so i'm just going to come to the background layer Select it and hit Ctrl or Command J on the keyboard. And this is the layer from which I'm going to be removing the blemishes from this image. So with the clone stamp tool selected and the blend mode normal with content hardware selected, I'm just going to come and zoom in by using Ctrl Command Plus on the keyboard and reduce on the size of my spot healing brush tool and simply left click over the blemishes that I want to remove from this very image. So you can see it is doing a very okay job and in areas where the clone stamp tool is not working well i'm just going to be switching back to using the patch tool and how this works is simply select over the blemish and drag it to a clean area and that area is going to replace the blemish with an area that has clean skin so that is what i'm going to do while cleaning up or removing blemishes from this very image and i'm going to be forwarding this and i'll see you later on because I don't want this to be a very long tutorial so I'm just going to be forwarding this and I'll see you later on in this tutorial Hello, welcome back and you can see I'm done removing majority of the blemishes from this very image and the next thing we're going to be doing is going to be doing the skin retouching. So we're going to be using frequency separation to retouch this very image and remember frequency separation divides the image into the high frequency layer and the low frequency layer. In the high frequency layer usually we have our textures and in the low frequency layer usually we have our colors. So when you combine both layers you have to end up with the same original image so i'm just going to create another layer on top of this because we have already created a duplicate layer from the background layer so what is left is creating another layer from this layer one and pressing ctrl command j i'm going to name this into low and i'm going to name this into high like they are really moving so what i'm going to do i'm just going to come and select the low frequency layer and hide the high frequency layer then come to filter and come to blur and come down to gaussian blur so when i come to gaussian blur this is the most important step if at all you want to retain textures within the image so take the radius all the way down and you look for an area that seems to have more textures than the rest of the image and start taking the radius up up to the point when those textures are just starting to disappear or get lost from the image so at around five that is when i'm just starting to lose out on the details or the textures in the image I'm just going to come and click on OK. Then come to the high frequency layer and now activate it. Then come to image and come down to apply image. So when I come to apply image, it's going to open up the apply image window. So in this window, what I have to do basically, I'm going to come and make sure I select the low frequency. Layer. The reason for this is because when we are extracting the textures, we extract them from the low frequency. Layer. Remember, as we are blurring out the textures, we were blurring them out of the low frequency layer. that is why you have been able to select the low frequency layer so if at all you're using a 16-bit image what you have to do come and make sure you turn on the invert option right here so you can say i have 16 meaning my image is a 16-bit image and the blend mode has to be add or pass at 100 percent 
Preserve transparency and mask cannot check. The scale is trying to offset zero. And make sure your channel is RGB and you have the textures on the gray kind of layer. Then if at all you are dealing with an 8-bit image, if at all you have 8 right here, come and make sure you select the low frequency layer. The channel is RGB and make sure the invert option is not turned on. The blend mode for the 8-bit image has to be subtract. Opacity 100%. Preserve transparency and mask cannot check. The scale is 2 and offset 128 and you can click OK. So since mine is a 16-bit image, I'm going to be using a blend mode of add and turn on the invert. The scale is 2 offset 0. Opacity at 100%, preserve transparency and mask cannot check. I'm just going to come and press OK. So after doing that, the blend mode that is going to reveal back or hide this grayness from the image is going to be linear light. So just come and change it from normal and look for linear light and you get back the image where it was meant to be before. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put this three in a group by pressing Ctrl or Command G after selecting both and name this into frequency separation. So I'm just going to open up the frequency separation group and come and select the low frequency layer. So after doing that, come under the brushes, right click and get the mixer brush tool. Then if at all you are having older versions of Photoshop, you may find your mixer brush tool below here. So after getting the mixer brush tool, I'm going to come and set it. So make sure the hardness is zero and make sure it is a clean brush. So make sure you select the option which says clean the brush after each and every stroke. Remember, we just want to blend the transitions within the skin area of our model using the mixer brush tool. And remember, the skin usually has different overing tone of variations. That's why we want the brush to be clean because we're going to be dealing with different areas that have different color. And we want Photoshop to clean the brush for us automatically as we are working on the image. So the weight is going to be 9%, the load of 75, the mix at 90, and the flow of 100%. So make sure sample all layers is not checked because when you check this option, it means that your brush is also going to be carrying textures and painting them in the low frequency layer, which you don't want. So make sure sample orders is not turned on. And after selecting the low frequency layer, just come and hide the high frequency layer. The reason for hiding it is because we only want to look at the colors as we are mixing and having a very nice and smooth transition. So if I told you mixer brush tool is showing a plus icon, simply make sure you press the caps lock key on the keyboard. And if I told you want to decrease or increase on the size of the mixer brush tool you can use the open and close brackets on the keyboard so basically when you're done doing that and as you're retouching we have to retouch and mix colors that are looking alike within the image so you can see that we have these colors and the one i'm going to be using or moving the mixer brush in the direction of the area or the shape that area is really moving so you can see that this area is moving from this kind of the jawline moves in this kind of direction so i'm just going to move the mixer brush tool in that kind of direction and the good thing about this technique is the more it looks like a wax painting or the more plastic it is looking the better the results so make sure you mix and you retouch when you're mixing you make sure you're mixing the colors at a distance because when you zoom all the way in you can't see the color inconsistencies or the inconsistencies within the skin tones of your image. So you can see that this area has been smoothened out and don't mind if at all it is looking like a wax painting because when you come back and return on the textures, you can see that the image is now looking good with the textures involved. So as I said before, the textures are still intact. So just come and hide this and just come and continue working and blending the transitions within the skin area of your photo or your portrait so just come reduce on the size depending on how big or how small the area is and just mix or blend the colors so if at all you're working with a highlight area just mix the highlight alone and while they're trying to transition from one area to another or one color to another just come and mix that border and it is going to enable you have a very nice and seamless transition within those colors in the skin tone so i'm just going to be forwarding this because i don't want this to be a very long tutorial
hello welcome back and you can see that i'm now done blending the transitions within the skin area and you can see that this is the before after before after and now the textures are remaining intact within this very image so the next thing that we're going to be doing is refining or perfecting the areas we, we may have missed out when we are using the mr blush tool even out or blend the transitions within this very image so with this high frequency layer now turned on and the low frequency layer is still selected just come and get the lasso tool and make sure it is in new selection mode and the feathering is 22 pixels because we want the selection to be having smooth edges so make sure you put it to around 22 pixels and now you can come and you select the skin area so make sure you follow the shape of that area then come to filter and come to blur and come down to gush and blur so this is more like a perfecting step so just come and take the radius up you can see that we had this is what we had when we are separating the frequencies of the image so just come and simply start taking up that radius up to, up to the point when you feel like you're having a very nice and beautiful skin texture for your image so around 16 that is okay but you can as well use this technique that i use for most of my images so remember we had the radius of five pixels so whichever radius you may have used for your images just multiply that radius by three and type in that value so five by three is 15 and you can see that i'm going to be having the same texture or a natural texture so just come and click ok so i'm just going to deselect by clicking away from the selection and come and make selections on other areas that have skin so right click and come to gush and blur just like that and come to this other area and also make a selection right click and come to gush and blur when you feel like the effect is too much you can right click on the selection and come to fade gush and blur and you reduce on the opacity of that effect so i'll leave mine at 100 percent for purposes of this tutorial so i'm just going to come right click and come to gush and blur and come to these other areas and also apply this technique and you can see that we have a better or a nicely retouched image so if at all you are still experiences experiencing rather blemishes in the image you can come to the high frequency and now get the clone stamp tool and make sure the hardness is at zero the mode is normal opacity and, and flat 100 percent make sure aligned is checked and also the sample has to be current layer because we want to deal with the textures or the blemishes in the high frequency layer and now you can zoom in and hold down the alternate key on the keyboard close to the blemish and left click release the alternate and the left click button and simply left click over the blemish to eliminate it from the image so you can just do this and fine tune or clean up the blemishes that may have remained within the photo so that is how to use the clone stamp tool and i'm just going to be forwarding this too because i don't want this to be a long and monotonous boring tutorial so i'm just going to be forwarding this and i'll see you when we are done removing these other blemishes that may have remained within the image hello welcome back and you can see that i'm done removing the blemishes from the image and this is the overall before and after before and after so this is how you can do frequency separation for your images in photoshop and if at all you have learned something new don't forget to like this video don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you found this video helpful Ronis from Ronis photography thank you for watching and see you in yet more amazing trails and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating if at all you want to be a better photographer and retoucher out there and i'll see you next time